and welcome to another episode of Lex Education, the comedy science podcast where comedian me, Laura Lex, tries to learn science from her nerdy younger brother, Ron. Hello, I'm Ron. Hey, Ron. How's it going? Oh, God, the sun came out. <laughs> oh, my God, it's so bright. Um, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm very tired, Ron. It's been like a two weeks straight of working... 12 hours a day and um and and I've got three more days and then I've got a day and a half off nice nice how are you yeah I'm good I'm very busy as well but um that just that's just being a grown-up isn't it just perpetually being tired pretty much pretty yeah, much fun 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 yeah. Um, so welcome to this week's episode. Now listen, we've got a couple of disclaimers up the top. One, there felt like there were even more niche references to Laura and Ron's specific childhood in this episode. Like what? <laughs> um, like the concrete tubes we used to play in as children. <laughs> I don't know if that's a reference. It's more of a charming childhood vignette. <laughs> yeah, but just to say, um, hey, get on board early uh, with that. Um, and then also, just before we jump into the episode, we just wanted to say this week's episode is about coronary heart disease. And obviously, we're just sticking to the syllabus. We don't go out of our way to be insensitive, but it is a lighthearted podcast and we are our usual selves around the subject of what is a very serious subject. Um, so bear in mind that if heart attacks or heart disease are likely to be a bit close to the bone for you, might be just best to skip this episode because we're not going out of our way to be bastards, obviously, but we're also not talking about it solemnly. So y you do you. Ron is nodding. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Did it get a bit sincere and Ron didn't know how to cope again? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking worm um okay cool not many announcements up top so go have fun enjoy your lives we adore you no listen to the podcast that's what i'm saying it's not the end Mwah. it's biology day hello let's get biology ology gonna get biology Ology. Do you know why that's a great song to sing, Ron? Because we're studying biology today. And the song is called Let's Get Physical. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, um, it's, uh, it's ONJ, isn't it? Uh, it is, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, Laura, you need to do a lot of the heavy lifting in this episode, okay? I do the heavy lifting every bloody week, mate. I need nonsense. I need singing. I need metaphors. Why is that? Is it boring today? Is it bad biology? No, it was not boring, but today, um, add whimsical sound effect, we're going to be looking at coronary heart disease. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Coronary heart disease is heart disease made with mayonnaise, um, a little bit of sultanas and some turmeric. <laughs> Yes, and you can get it for three pounds fifty from Waitrose. <laughs> I made oh, my own coronation a... chicken once. Yeah, it was amazing because I just didn't put the raisins in. Yeah, why would you ever put raisins? Because all raisins does to my head is make me think I've had a bad bit of chicken. <laughs> I go, like, ah, why that chicken roll? No, oh, especially raisin. when the raisins have been in there for ages and then they've yeah. swollen up with the the juices. Did you ever listen to um, Danny Champion of the World when he soaked the raisins in rum and then slit them open and put sleeping powder in them? Yep. An amazing amount of effort to go to for a pheasant. <laughs> yeah. A ghost boy. That's Jeremy Irons for car. you, though. That was my favourite bit of that audiobook. Um, I like the bit where they tickle the fish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good book. So, all in all, a very good story, isn't it? Yeah. Bigger. So weird. Um... Right, coronary heart disease. Ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah, we were learning about the heart last time, weren't we? We were indeed. Um, yes. Yeah, there were rooms, The ball valves, bags of the torso. The ball bags of the torso. Oh, my God, Ron. I went to a wedding this weekend. Congrats. It'll be weeks ago by the time people are listening to this. And um, we were talking about... C can you get your balls back in your body? 
No. Oh. <laughs> See, that was the reaction of several of the guests at this wedding. Yeah, that's then, a weird question to ask people. I didn't ask it. It came up. I can't remember how. And then some people went off and tried it. And they could. But they didn't know before. So coronary heart disease. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, you go to the loo now, see if you can do it. And if you can, you're having coronation chicken for dinner. But what do you mean by back up inside your body? There's a little, like, cove that you can pop them in. No, they don't have a dock. That's they do, they do. <laughs> they do. I don't believe that to be true. They do. Honestly, read the Reddit threads that I read at this wedding. I feel so sorry for the bride and groom. <laughs> we were just, just sitting in the corner reading threads about testicles. But you, lots of people can. And sometimes they just jump up in there on their own. So coronary heart disease. <laughs> Do you know what that is, Laura? Um, when your arteries get clogged and you can't pump, pump. But, Got to know, pump it up. But you know, Your heart can't pump it up. Do you know which arteries? Um, the pulmonary artery. Don't just guess. The vena cava. Not an artery. <laughs> well, that's the only artery I've written down. It's not an artery. It's called the vein cava. I said pulmonary artery, first of all. Yeah, but do you know what pulmonary means? Squamous <laughs> of the lungs. <laughs> yeah, but it was—it's like the motorway between the heart and the lungs. Yeah, it's like the M1 between not. Think about and what coronary might mean, like a corona. Yep, a circle. No. A crown. No. What's a corona? A beer, a disease, a star. Well, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, um, the, like the, the corona is like the, the bit around a star, like the, the light that comes off a star. Right. So coronary heart disease is when the arteries around the heart that actually feed the heart get blocked. Yeah, but I didn't write down what they're called, so I can't tell you. <laughs> Yeah, but I didn't use their name just then. I just communicated it with other words, not just the four words that you wrote down last time. Oh. Well, I didn't know what corona meant either. I, corona. Um, so, is that what corona means? Yeah, it's called the coronavirus because it has all these proteins on the outside of it that point outwards. Chicken disease? He loves it when I say that chicken is protein. I, right, so all the arteries around the outside of the heart. The arteries around the outside of the heart get blocked, yeah. Okay, arteries get blocked, yep, okay. So all the blood gets, like, backlogged into the heart. No, it's not the arteries that take blood in and out of the heart, it's the arteries that feed the heart with blood. Oh, so there's no heart in your blood. No, other way around. No blood in your heart. No, it's not about whether blood gets into the heart or not. It's the <laughs> arteries that feed, like, the muscles of the heart, the heart walls. Oh, so the heart can't pump. Yes. So the blood is fine. <laughs> I understand. The blood is fine in the heart, sitting there in its seat, ready to go. Oh, look at us in the clavicle. And then the... But the heart can't squelch it about. Yeah, essentially. So... Sorry, there's been an engine failure. I'm imagining all the blood coming in and it, like, puts its seatbelt on, ready to go. You know, you sit down there and you're like, oh, shouldn't the train have left by now? Yeah. Oh, shouldn't we have been squelched into the next pulmonary ventricle by now? And then, oh, we're going to have to get a rail replacement heart, aren't we? <laughs> Bloody hell. Gonna have to get a vein What's wrong with this country? Um, yeah, so... It, uh, Is this the kind of interruptions you wanted today? Yes, more of these, please. Um, <laughs> uh, so, it's weird. so do you know what they get blocked up with? Fat. Yes, fatty deposits. Cholesterol. Only bad cholesterol, though. Only bad cholesterol. There are two different types of cholesterol. Um, Delicious 
and broccoli. These are called plaques. Um, oh, like teeth plaque. Mm-hmm. Um, they're called plaques. Okay. They build up in the walls of the arteries, essentially. Yeah, okay. Bacon and stuff gets stuck. Yeah, um, but like actually like under the surface of the artery in the wall of it, not it's, it's not like a blockage in the pipe. You can't just sense. send like a scourer through and scrape it off. Exactly, yeah, because they are built in. All right. Everyone has some of these to a certain degree. Um, they narrow the artery and they decrease the flow of blood. It's the the mechanism that builds them. It's a natural part of artery repair, essentially. So yeah, okay. um, your arteries are, are under quite high pressure all the time because obviously they're the ones that are taking blood away from the heart, the freshly pumped blood. So at that point, it's like shooting out like a rocket, right? Yeah. Lots of um, lots of pressure on the artery. Um, this can cause damage sometimes, and this is why high blood pressure is bad for you. That's why you need good mental health care in the workplace. If somebody was taking these arteries off every couple of days and saying, like, is the workload okay? How are you feeling? You all right? Then everything would be better. But if you just give them bacon and go, there you go, cheer yourself up, Leo, then that's when they start to break down. Leo? Yeah. <laughs> I was imagining a worker who was getting really stressed. You know? Leo the, Leo the artery. <laughs> Um, yes. Uh, oh, I should have gone for, like, Arthur the Artery. Arty Artery. No, Leo now. It's called Leo now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is why um, having high blood pressure is bad for you, because the higher the blood pressure, you cause more damage to the uh, lining of your arteries, essentially. Yeah, because the blood's going through it too hard, wearing it away. Yeah, kind of. Um, yeah, and then, as I say... I've got very low blood pressure. Oh, that's nice. You can eat as much Sometimes salt as you so want. Sometimes it's so low that I lose my vision when I stand up. Cool. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Yeah, so it's a natural mechanism to repair your arteries. Um, when you're a caveman, just like going around chewing on sticks and eating riverbeds and all whatever cavemen do, it's fine, right? Because all you're kind of eating is grit and, and, and nonsense. Um, however, in the modern world, where we're eating like chips and flying saucers and um, you know millions and stuff like that, there's too much yeah. fat, um, and then this uh, the system goes into overdrive. Okay, so, but it's not like you know, like they say, avocados are fatty. That's what we mean by good fat. That's the stuff that's not building up your artery walls. Yeah, so this is from A-level, um, so it's not in the syllabus, so I haven't researched it, but there's two different types of ways cholesterol can get around your body, HDLs and LDLs, which is high-density and low-density lipo, lipoproteins, I think it's, it's called. So it's basically like these little balls that go around, and the low-density ones, they're the bad ones, that comes from bad fat. The high-density ones are the good ones, because it's high-density, H is for healthy, HDL. Um, yeah, and then they take fats away from you. They take fats, like, out of your blood. So what do you have to eat to get the fats out of your blood? Um, like if you've got high blood pressure and you've got a fatty arteries, what what do you have to do to, to calm that down? You know, like special K. Ketamine. That feels like bad medical <laughs> advice. Yeah, no, it's good enough for horses. Horses are huge. <laughs> and they're always eating chips and flying saucers. <laughs> Imagine a horse eating millions. Oh, he's so toothy, isn't it? I like you like it all my teeth. I I I've, I've been thinking a lot about food recently because I'm I'm trying to trying to eat better and I've been going to the gym and stuff, and like I look at like some of the things that like you know I, I'll, I'll pick them up in the shop now and I'll be like no don't buy that one don't buy that one and it's just like why the fuck was I eating some of this stuff as a child why why was a bowl of cocoa pops ever given to a child yeah like that's mad. Because as a child, it's just like, yeah, get loads of energy in. Who cares? They're just going to, like, power up. But it's just like, like, that's a pudding. Why are you having pudding for breakfast every day? Nutella. You wait till you've got a child that you just want to shut up for a while. Oh. You'll be like, here you go. 
No, that child will never taste sugar. Hmm. Taylor Glenn, one of a uh, fantastic comedian, Drunk Women Solve and Crime podcast. She used to have a bit of material where she said that. She was like, before I had a child, I was like, no sugar, no screens. I want to raise this child properly. And then she said, and then the other day, I served her a piece of cake on the iPad because I thought it would buy me a bit more time because she'd have to eat the cake first to get the screen time. No, that's good. No. Ah, no, I... I don't want a child. What? A, that sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> I'm, I'm frustrated enough owning a cat. <laughs> right. Uh, we it, um, students should be able to evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of treating cardiovascular diseases by drugs, med- uh, mechanical devices, or transplant. This feels heavy for teaching fifteen-year-olds. Yeah. Jeez, isn't there anything else about plants they could be learning? I don't want to be like Grey's Anatomy just on a Tuesday morning science lesson. Yeah, I mean, it is a bit... You know, you learn about the heart, and it's like, whoa, the wonders of biology. And then it's like, and this is how you can fuck it up irretrievably, yeah. you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, do you eat mayonnaise by the spoonful? Because here's what's happening on yeah. the inside. You out in the playground just mainlining millions into your mouth. <laughs> this is what's going to happen to you. Are you a horse? <laughs> You're probably fine. Well, they're huge. <laughs> it's good medicine. Um, right. So, do you know what a stent is? Uh, actually, I think I might. Is a stent like a little, like, um, opener that you put in? It's like a little, um, l- like a little... Stop doing lewd hand gestures, <laughs> Abby. It's not a lewd hand... I don't know how to describe it, but it, it's like a little... It's a tube. Like scaffolding for your artery. Yeah. Just to, like, poke it wider. Yeah. I think it's like yeah. a... I think they're tubes quite a lot. And you just put them in, and then they hold it open. The blood can flow through freely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I have heard of a stent. Yes. Nice. Um, it 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 doesn't tell us any of the advantages or disadvantages of this. Um, so. All right. Let's make them up then. So, advantage. Uh, everybody loves tubes. Um, did were the tubes still there by our house when you were a kid, or had they gone by then? Oh yeah, the tubes were there. They were dope. Yeah, just down by our house, there was like some wasteland. And then there were just these massive concrete tubes that you could play in. Yeah, and there was like a bit of stagnant water next to them, and it looked kind of like a secret lagoon. Yeah. Those fields, endless entertainment. Oh, so good. So that's a stent. Negatives, uh, it's probably open heart surgery to get that in, isn't it? Yeah. So that's difficult. And if they put it in the wrong vein... Then, well, that's a positive because then you can sue and and millions. Yeah, to leave to your loved ones. Um, <laughs> um, uh, also a positive. Um, it's just a one-off, just done now. Tubes in. Tubes in. Don't have to remember to take ketamine every other day. <laughs> you don't. You don't forget. <laughs> um, okay, statin. Um, statins. Do you know what statins are? Do you know Dad started listening to our podcast? No. Yeah. He started on episode two, though, because he was uh, listening to it in the car with Mum and I told him that it was the prickly bag of goo joke. (laughs) I was like, don't listen to that one. Um, Statins. Um, It sounds like it comes from static electricity, so um, I'm thinking, like, it's charged things that get in and, like, electro-pulse the fat away. Um, maybe they're drugs that get rid of, uh, that decrease the amount of cholesterol and fatty substances in the blood. Okay, so drugs that break down fat. So they're like anti-millions. Anti-millions, yeah. Yeah, so advantages, reduce the risk of a heart attack. Great. Aren't all of these doing that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's... What treatment for a heart attack are you going to have? That you're like, well, it doesn't do anything about the heart attack, but it is a lovely nail varnish. Weirdly, that is. It's only in the advantages for for the drugs in this little table I've got. Have we have we just stumbled?
called upon some massive problems with the health service. They have four different options for heart disease, but only one of them helps. Have we just uncovered a massive conspiracy? I think it might be because the other ones come in post heart attack. So it's like you've already biffed it. Oh. Uh, maybe. That's that, that's what – because the, the next one on the list is a heart transplant. And I don't think they do that in a preventative, like, you might be fine, but let's just whack a new one in there while we're here. I don't think they do that. <laughs> Even if you're a real baddie and they're like, you've been really mean to everybody, we're going to give you a new heart and see if it makes you nicer. No, I think with baddies, they're like, you've been a real meanie, so we're going to let you maybe have a heart attack. We're going to give this <laughs> heart to this nun. Yeah. Anyway, studies have shown a decrease in bad cholesterol. I know it's a callback to last episode, but it was like 20 minutes ago. For us. Imagine being a baddie and you turn up for your trial and you're like, I wonder if I'll get found innocent or sentenced to death. And then a guy comes in, Who are you? Oh, I'll be doing your voice <laughs> after you've died. <laughs> <laughs> Probably have to cut that bit out. That was a good bit thing. Yeah, that was a good bit. I mean, who's listening to episode 19 without having heard 18? That would be crazy. No, that would be mad. I was just editing episode 15 famously, and there's one bit where we're just riffing off the, the name Ohm, as in, like, of resistance, and then you just go, Ohm, I'm telling. <laughs> and it really makes me laugh every time. <laughs> Uh, we are good. It's going to be just us listening to this in a few months. <laughs> like we're basically making a podcast for ourselves to listen to, like absolute narcissists. Right. Um, right. Okay, we need to get on because um, this is my lunch break. <laughs> so, right. Um, Stent statins. I hope the next one also is a stir. Stabdibules. We're still on or drugs. Heart transplant. No, we missed heart transplant. Yeah, we'll, we'll be there. Um, star transplant. Um, studies have shown a decrease in bad cholesterol and an increase in good cholesterol when you have statins. Used to reduce high cholesterol levels. Used, not used to. Used to they reduce used to. They high do cholesterol anymore. levels that have genetic causes. May have beneficial, effect, beneficial effects on other conditions cheap to administer. Statins are cheap. Lots of good stuff there with statins, right? Yeah. Bad stuff. Hang on a second. I just need to go make sure that no water's coming in through open windows. Is it raining? Yeah, apparently. Although I can't see it raining, but Judith's just texted me because we're staying in her aunt and uncle's house. Okay. You just riff on statins. I'll be back. Uh, I'm the stat man. Ski ba 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 da bo. Ba 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 da bo. Ski ba 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 da bo. Statine. That could be the um, heroin in Moulin Rouge heart. Uh, like if you made the numb skulls, but about things to do with heart disease. Um, do you like statin or stilk briefs? Um, I've always found statin a bit sl- a bit slipperier. Um, statin, s- statin. S- s- um, maybe like Stalin. If you accidentally crossed the L in Stalin, then that would be so you know a kind of. Oh, this is good. I now run Russia. Hello. I've cleared your heart, sis. Now we must all work together. Hello. Can you guess what was happening? Um, stand in. I've. I now run Russia. I've cleared your heart disease, so now we can all work together. Is that what you said? Yep. Yeah. No. Uh. <laughs> no idea what bit that is. I can't <laughs> wait to find out. <laughs> There are some disadvantages to statins, though, Lord. Yeah, they're communists. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, they're not suitable for people with liver disease. Oh, no. There are some side effects. That's all it says. Brilliant, yeah. Must be taken for life. 
Oh, shit. So once you get a stat independency, if you get rid of them, then phew, that's the breakdown of the whole communist bloc. Apparently. And America will never forgive you. And shouldn't, should not be taken if pregnant or breastfeeding. Uh-oh. But I only eat breasts. It's the best meat. The breast meat is the best meat. The breast meat is the best meat. That is from, what was that from? The Foxbusters. Dicking Smith? Yeah. Dicking. What a good name. <laughs> it's just out there in plain sight your whole childhood, wasn't it? And you were allowed to say it. Dicking Smith. Who's your favourite author? Dicking. <laughs> yeah. I guess from his perspective, though, the other like option would have been to be called Rich King Smith, which may, would have made mm. him sound a bit like an arsehole. Or somebody who's really good at forging kings out of iron. Commercially savvy. Um, mm. Right, so that's statins. Um, yep. In some people, heart valves may become faulty, preventing the valve from opening fully. Or the heart valve might develop a leak. That Ooh. makes me feel gross. Yeah. Imagine that, just a leak growing in your heart. <laughs> I think, is that not, is that, no, I was going to make a joke about Welsh people, but it didn't materialise. Um, <laughs> students should be able to, should, uh, should understand the consequences of faulty valves. Faulty heart valves can be replaced using biological or mechanical valves. Yeah, you can have a pig valve, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, poor pigs. Yeah, which I always found a little bit weird, because it's like, valves is something that... We've we've worked out, you know, like a liver. We don't have mechanical livers. Like, yeah, you can't buy a liver down at the shop and like have it on your desk. Well, you a can. Valves, well, not not a mechanical one. No. But a valve, like you know, there's a valve in an airbed. Yeah, but you don't want an airbed because airbeds famously have terrible valves. They go down all the time. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Like you know, airbed's not brill, but. What I'm saying is, we... if I'm looking at a pig in an airbed and somebody says, "Look, this is the thing that's going to keep you alive," I'll go for what the pigs got. Pigs are hardy. I don't know though if you would, because it'd be. You want to smell like an airbed? You want to smell life. like a dead pig? It wouldn't be dead that bit though. It'd be in me. I'm keeping it alive. Exactly. It's drenched in pig blood. Lovely. Lolly, lolly. You're an inventor, Laura, obviously. Yeah. If you were in making one of your fantastical inventions <laughs> and for some reason you needed a... I hate the a... shade on my inventions, by the way. <laughs> I'm being it positive is... right now. No, you're not. Everybody knows from the tone that you do not think I'm an inventor. <laughs> but one of your cool inventions... Um, if you decided to use a pig valve for that machine instead of a mechanical one, people would think you were crazy. Yeah, but people always thought the best people were crazy. <laughs> everybody that's ever been cool, everybody else at the time was like, too straight-laced and, you're crazy! You can't draw a face with eyes up there and a nose over there. What's that? Boom, it's 2022 and we love Picasso. No, that's not true. Everyone loved Picasso when he was alive. That's just what the school shooters want you to think. Oh, do we oh, hate I'm Picasso just, now? I'm, no, but it's just like, oh, I'm misunderstood in my own time. Everybody loves people after they're dead. No, everyone knows who the cool people are. Don't say that because then... I've been in this career for 13 years and the reaction I'm getting is warranted rather than I'm just biding my time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I don't think Elvis was trotting around like, oh, nobody likes me. It's like, no, it was huge. No, Elvis was fine, but he was very mainstream, you know? Yeah. What about G Gallipoli? Not Gallipoli. <laughs> Who was the one that got killed for knowing about the planets Galileo yes I knew it was Galley something Galileo what about him he he didn't um yeah but he was like he was renowned at his time big enough that he pissed off the By, church like, four people yeah because there were only like six people in Italy at the time yeah this was hundreds of years ago no I listen 
Shut up, please. I am an inventor. I'm not trying to. Anyway, I haven't even said I'm an inventor. I said I'm good at coming up with solutions for things, but not computer stuff. And therefore, had I been alive in a time of wheelbarrows and wood rather than microchips and silicon, I think I would have been a good inventor. And I'm agreeing with you. I'm trying to talk about it on your level. I think someone would be very impressed with me for ha- where, Why are we even talking about anymore? I, someone would be very impressed with me for having got a valve out of a pig, I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't even really know. How because we... what are you talking about? What is a valve anyway? Just a flap? A valve? Who the hell has ever seen a flap and gone, brilliant, well done, Ron, you've made a flap? Whereas if I was like, look what I just got out of a pig, <laughs> people would be like, sorry, Ron, your sister's right. She is a genius. Can you take your flap away now? <laughs> Very resourceful, using all of the animal, <laughs> using these valves for our machines. Oh, I'd have used the rest of the pig for something else, like some trotter candlesticks, black pudding, um, give the ears to dogs, bladder can be a football... Um, all the stuff. Yeah, it's this kind of resourcefulness that makes you a world-class inventor, Laura. You can fuck yourself, Ron, because I'm not engaging with this. That apple sorter was good. <laughs> and it would have worked as well. And I don't even know why you are wanky about it. I'm trying to praise you right now. You're just not... You're not! <laughs> you're not trying to praise... No one thinks you're praising me. I've said you're a world-class inventor. Fuck off. Do you want to end the episode now or do you want to be pleasant and kind? What have you ever invented? I'm not an inventor. (laughs) I leave that to the professionals like you, (laughs) misunderstood in their own time like Galileo. (laughs) Yeah, I am. Thank you. Anyway, advantages of replacing heart valves, mechanically or piggly, depending on your choice. Advantages. Restore blood flow through the heart. I don't think you can just put the advantages are. It does the thing we're aiming to do. <laughs> That's not an advantage or a disadvantage, because if it didn't do that one wouldn't advantage, be on the list. it wouldn't be a solution. <laughs> yeah. Eating an orange does not help, but not invasive. <laughs> Like, this list could be massive. Just everything you've ever thought of doing, disadvantage. It does not help with heart disease. (laughs) But it doesn't hurt. (laughs) So it goes on the list. Um, Less risk of complications in surgery than a transplant. Okay. Disadvantages. The biological valves may wear out. Pigs don't live forever. Also, the pigs will seek revenge. Yeah, who knows which bits of our bodies they're going to be using yeah. when they rise We've up. We've all read Animal Farm. We know Napoleon's coming for us. Oh, yeah. And um, we're going to be sent off to make glue. Blood oh, clots. No, now I've made some really unhelpful notes. <laughs> Blood clots. The bio replacements will seek us out. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll wear out. <laughs> Whoops. Blood clots may stick to mechanical valves. Ugh. Oh, that nasty. Anti-blood clotting drugs need to be taken, which increase risk of further illness. Oh, fuck this. I'm not having a heart valve transplant. Yeah. Clots as well. Yuck. Just seems long, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Um, There's something so disgusting about blood clots. Slippery little... Ugh. Now I'm thinking about, you know, when you don't quite mix gravy up well enough and you get like a little slug of gravy. I think that's what it's like, yeah. I love those, though. Salty little... If blood tasted salty, mine probably does. <laughs> <laughs> I love salt. No, it tastes like iron. Yeah. Because of metal. Because of metal, yes. In some people... No. In case of heart failure, a donor heart or heart and lungs... A donut heart? Donor. Oh. Uh, uh. You know, like one of the ones you get on a stick that stick rotates slowly. And and, hey. Yeah! Look at Ron doing the jokes. Or... A donor heart. A yeah. donor heart or... 
a she shark. <laughs> nope. That's pretty good. <laughs> a donor heart or a heart and lungs can be transplanted. Whoa, would you just transplant the whole lot? Mm-hmm. Take the lungs out as well, even if they're good? That's what it says in this sentence. Ah, just a two-for-one package. Yeah. While we're in here, mate, you know, we might as well spruce up the old alveoles. Look, mate, there's loads of fucking tubes. We're just going to take the load out. <laughs> <laughs> um, artificial hearts are occasionally used to keep patients alive whilst waiting for a heart transplant or to allow the heart to rest as an aid to recovery. What? So I think what you can do is you can just have all of the blood coming out, getting pumped around by an artificial heart, going back in, and then your heart can just chill for a bit. Wow. I wonder how the heart feels about that. Um, well, hearts are famously quite emotional, so probably feels a lot about it. Yeah. I bet it's that thing like when you've got burnout. Like, I'm a workaholic. And at first, I find it very hard to stop working. But then after a while, you're like, it is nice having other things in your life. Yeah, I don't know. I've never really been a workaholic. No. I don't know. You check the the listener stats for this podcast quite a lot. That's the beginnings of it, I think. (laughs) Yeah, but I don't really action anything. (laughs) No, that's all me. Yeah. Um, But I do all this great research... um, Tom's away at the moment, so I force myself to have an hour off work every day. That's when I play Minecraft. Smart. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd just work from the minute I get up to... Well, I suppose I walk the dog. I don't work then. Yeah, I mean, I think I'd be a lot more like that if I worked for myself. But because I work, um, like, a nine to five, as soon as it hits five o'clock, I'm like, fuck you, you're not paying me for this time. I am out. Um, and then I leave. Smart. Yeah. But I am thinking about work a lot. I'm very good at my job. Um, right, we've done these bits. We've done... People with very high blood pressure may be prescribed medicines to help lower it. Oh, yeah, no, we need... that? Statin? No, the, no, this is... To... All right, wait, no, we need to do the, the, the pros and cons of a, of a transplant. Oh, God... It's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot. That's the cons. It's a lot. You have to kill a pig. Scars. Well, no, you don't use... Might reject the heart. I don't think very often you use pig hearts for a whole transplant. Oh, that would be really cool. Some people have pig hearts, but I don't think very many. Usually they just use a human heart. Oh, all right. Um, they take them from people that are getting killed for petty crimes. Oh no, they're <laughs> cutting my heart out. With a spoon. Um, uh, so it does hurt more. He was right. <laughs> Advantages: improves quality of life and can be life-saving. Now, no shit. Oh my god, these positives and negatives are so stupid. You know that thing we're talking about? It does that. To be fair, it doesn't say that it reduces the risk of heart attack and it doesn't say that it restores blood flow to the heart, so... Oh, so you'll be having a heart attack every 20 minutes, but you will still be alive through it. Great. And then disadvantages. It says few donor hearts are available, but then it's like you only need one, so if there's a few available, it's fine. Um, Do they have to be a match like blood does? I think so. Hmm. I, I might be wrong. You definitely have to take immunosuppressants all the time. Oh, no. Yeah. It's not brill. To stop your body rejecting it. Yeah. Woof. Yeah. I th- um, immunosuppressants are kind of like that little barcode that the person on the self-checkout has. Keep going, no, it's fine. No, I told you it was... I said she was over 18. Kind of, but it's also just more like... <laughs> If uh, if there was a, a shop that was like, someone's going to come in here today. Um, th- I promise they're over 18, but just so we don't have any trouble, just send all the security home. I think it's a bit more yeah. like that. Okay. Recovery time is long. 
Yeah, no shit. You had your heart wrenched out and put a new one in. I expect they have to break all your ribs to get in there, do they? Or do they go in underneath? Oh, I don't know. Slip it in between the cracks or something. Um, <laughs> like an octopus. <laughs> <laughs> there is a risk of rejection. Are we going to learn about octopuses? Maybe. They're wild, aren't they? Cephalopods. I've had to stop eating them since she told me that they were really clever. Yeah, they're really clever. I used to love calamari. It's on the list now. Yeah, but you're a vegetarian now. You should be eating that anyway. Well, I was pescatarian because I just don't really care about fish. (laughs) So. (laughs) And prawns, they're not really animals, are they? They're basically wood lice of the sea. Yeah, but those are animals. Yeah, but I don't care about them. (laughs) I probably will come to at some point and then even more joy will be stripped from my life. God, I hate thinking about things. I wish I just didn't think or care. I think life would be much better. Yeah. Yeah, especially because nothing we do really makes any difference. No. God, it's depressing, isn't it? Yeah. And you're just fucked either way. Like, Judith and I are trying so hard not to fly anywhere at the moment. But it's just like, the train to Austria is 250 euros. The flight is 60. Like, what are you supposed to do? And then even if you didn't fly your whole life, fucking Kylie Jenner's taking 17-minute private jet flights. Did you see that thing? And you just kind of go like, oh, my God, I, I don't know. I feel very despondent about the whole world. I have a prawn. Yeah. <sighs> there is a risk of rejection by the body's <laughs> immune system, though. <laughs> what, to prawn? <laughs> to prawns. I've had that. <laughs> Shut myself on a dog walk, mate. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if you got a heart transplant, though, your body would probably just be like, oh, everyone rally around this. It's from a different body. <laughs> it's the Messiah. <laughs> Tell us about being somewhere with serotonin naturally. Ooh. <laughs> It's my kidneys just hanging out in the rib cage. Don't make us go back down there to Laura's natural body parts. Um, expensive operation and aftercare. Okay. That's heart transplants. All right. Yeah, that feels logical. Yeah. The other thing that the last thing that came up on BBC Bite Size. Um, oh, I love BBC Point Slice. Yeah, is um, a coronary bypass. Well, you just don't use the heart at all. No, it's an operation in which veins from the patient's legs are grafted into the heart in order to bypass the sections of the coronary artery that are blocked. There are four. A bit like the circuits we were doing last week, Ron. Ooh, run it in parallel. Yes, that's basically what they've thought about there, haven't they? Hmm, indubitably. Maybe they were doing their physics lecture and suddenly went, this could work in the heart. I don't well, think... How do, you do, how do your legs carry on after that, though? They grow back. Oh! The thing about your heart is that your heart needs to function 24-7, otherwise you're fucked. Yeah. So it it can't. Whereas you could sit down for a bit while you grew new legs. Exactly. Veins. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. There are four coronary arteries, so the largest number of grafts is called a quadruple bypass. Oh, that's what that means. Yeah. How are we doing for time? Well, we should be wrapping up, probs. Ah, the uh, Greeks. That's that's everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I feel like the quiz will be quite straightforward there. A lot of that was just real stupid. Um, What's the advantages of getting treatment for a, for an illness, Laura? <laughs> Treats the illness, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that's going to be... I hope all five questions are that. <laughs> yeah, I. what are we going on to next? Because that's... Um, that was um that got dark by the end. Mm. Aren't we into Halloween next or was that the Halloween episode? <laughs> no, no, tomorrow is that uh, we're tomorrow we're recording the Halloween episode. Halloween. Um all right. Well, I'll see you shortly for the quiz. Ta-da. Okay. 
late recording. Ron, um, I just feel like this is going to go very badly because we've actually recorded another episode between this and the pre and this episode. So there's even more in the swamp than usual. <laughs> Shrek's got buddies. Uh, so, whoa. I. For some reason, I was um, I was lying awake last night, and I came up with what. God, Shrek can you not would... even sleep the night before because you're so worried about this? <laughs> um, I came up with what Shrek would call his autobiography. Um, let me think. Uh, I don't know what would it be. <laughs> autobiography. Oh, Ron. Um, yeah. <laughs> Cut that out. No, I won't. It really made me laugh in the middle of the night. <laughs> um, okay, are you ready for the quiz now? I was born disinterested and have grown to be ready. Can you remember at all what we covered in the last biology? I can't, but my handy little notebook can. And uh, we we did all that sad beans about heart attacks. Yeah, we made it kind of jolly, though. Yeah. Oh, we make everything jolly. Um, give us a subject. We'll make it fun. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Um, don't do that, we won't. Well, <laughs> but we don't. might make a fun thing horrifying. Um, so, uh, yeah, heart disease. Yes, so today there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine points on offer, okay? Oh, that's a big quiz, okay. Yeah. So, what are the drugs called that lower the risk of coronary heart disease? Statins. Ding, ding. Yep, yeah, that's a correct answer. How many coronary arteries are there? Uh, the notebook doesn't remember. So... Two. One for each side of the heart. Bonk, bonk. No. It's for, like, a quadruple bypass. Oh, yeah. I yeah. love how against the sound effects you were when I first started editing this, and now you've started making them yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> I no, I'm not against the sound effects, but you went very overboard. It was uh, on the first edit. It was like a like a shock jock. It's like crazy Ira and the douche. I think that's what I liked about it. Is I find it very fun. Tom hates it. <laughs> So um, does Judith, doesn't she? Yeah, she's not a fan. Okay, um, that was a bonk bonk. That's sad. Yeah. Um, so you have one for two at the moment. The next one is a bit of a longer answer. How do the arteries get blocked? Salt. Um. Now, mere moments ago, listener, I said this was going to be a longer answer. <laughs> Laura replied <laughs> with a monosyllabic answer. Let's see where she goes from here. Oh, I've written down that arteries get blocked, and then I <laughs> oh, hang on, now, <laughs> now then, now then, no, wait, was that Jimmy Savile? Cut that. Um, so when you eat stuff that's got bad cholesterol in it, bad cholesterol has plaque. Um, salt is actually what makes your blood thick. I've just remembered. Bad cholesterol builds up plaque on the walls of the artery. And it actually is built into the artery. So the arteries themselves thicken. It's so you can't just like send a loofah down to scrub it off. It's like within the makeup of the artery. I'm going to... Fucking give me the point. Quite generously give you two out of three there, I think. Why? Um, because for quite a long time, like I'd say the the first forty percent of what you said was nonsense. Was it? Um, yeah, cholesterol doesn't have plaque in it. the The plaques are made up of cholesterol. Oh. Um, don't know where this thing about salt making your blood thick came from. We talked <laughs> about that, and then we talked about if you're dehydrated and too much salt, your blood. Uh, 
the, the diffusion. Remember? <laughs> no. <laughs> I swear that was a thing. It was. Water, water gets yeah. That's yeah. That's in diffusion. Like water gets sucked to where the the salt is. If anything, when you have more salt in your blood, there's more water in there. It increases your blood pressure. It doesn't make it thick. I thought the pressure was up because it was thick. No. Oh. <laughs> How do you get um, thick blood then? Who's to- who's got thick blood? <laughs> Well, no, I don't know. I don't remember ever speaking about thick blood, to be honest. (laughs) Is thick blood not a thing? Who's got thick blood? Put your hands up. People do have to go on blood thinners sometimes. There you go. So I uh, three out of three, thank you. No. Um, Then you said that it blocks up the artery, which, but then you did correct yourself and say that it's actually in the walls of the artery, so that's good. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Two out of three. Ain't bad. Okay, all right, okay. Um, for the listener at home, the the other thing that you would have had to say um, to get the last mark is that um, it's part of the natural sort of repair cycle of the artery, and then it goes you in You didn't there. ask me to say that. Well, that's how they get it blocked, is via that mechanism, but dietary factors make it go over the over the top. Um, I don't think you said that. So, okay, you okay. can have five points. Who, me? Yeah. Because I did actually don't think you taught me that stuff. But so I get points? Okay, uh, but you ready for the last one? You get half the points I get. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay. You only got two. Well, you get five. That's algebra, my friend. Oh. E equals delta ebim. <laughs> okay. Um, what are the advantages and disadvantages of replacement heart valves? Um, and... Uh, uh, two of each. Well, uh, well, listen. The pros are you won't die of a heart attack. Reduces the risk of a heart attack. That's a pro. Well, uh, um, can you elaborate on that a bit? Well, if you if you need one and you don't have one, you're going to die. So if you have one, that's good. Can you? Can you? Like, back it up, try again <laughs> on, on the elaboration. Wait, what am I talking about? The heart valves. Replacement of heart valves, yeah. Yeah. What do you more do you want than that? For God's sake. If you don't have it, you're going to die. Everyone's got them, Laura. That's not the issue. What do you mean everyone's got them? A replacement of heart valve? No, everyone's got heart valves. It's not I this, know that. It's not that some people are just born with sealed hearts. That we're talking, I thought we were talking about out. replacement heart valves. Yeah, we are. So what are you talking about? <laughs> so it's not about replacing ones that people don't have. I didn't say that. I said if you don't have the replacement and you've got a dodgy ticker, you'll die. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant if you don't have a valve. <laughs> no, I know you've all got valves. Well, you didn't before we did the, the episode, so... Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, you don't know anything before we did this. I didn't need to know. Listen, <laughs> so if your heart valve isn't working and you don't get it replaced, your heart will give up, won't it? <laughs> but you have to meet me halfway. You can't just say, ah, oh, it'll give up. Like, <laughs> well, The valve will break, won't it? It'll flap off or something or just stop flapping. Or not flapping, whatever the science of flapping is, the pulsing little... Beating. Beating. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, I'm, I, I, I'm going to, for the first time ever, leave this up to the listeners to decide. Um, it restores blood, thro- blood flow through the heart because the faulty valves either leak it and then that makes things bad or they don't open properly. Do you want to go for the other ones? Was that a pro or a con? <laughs> it restores blood flow. That's a yeah. pro. Okay. Another pro is uh, it's less risk than doing a whole heart transplant. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Um, less invasive than a full heart, heart transplant. Yes. Yep. A so downside your... is yep. uh, if you use a pig heart valve, it'll just wear out as well. So it do- might not last forever. Yep. Uh, now, I've written down clots as well, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing or what it means. 
think it through. If if you have well, a clot, I'm, how I'm not, do you feel? <laughs> well, I'm not sure though if they're saying that you know we can use heart valves for blood clots as well. Oh, I see. Or if we're like, oh, it might give you blood clots. Um. So. What am I looking for? Another con. It gives you blood clots. Um, take it a little bit further. A little bit further. It gives you blood clots, Rob. All right, no point for that then. <laughs> Stinking to pop Bibles uh, level. <laughs> Get out of town. No, so blood clots can stick to the mechanical valves, so you need oh. to take anti blood clotting drugs all the time. Uh, okay. So the yeah, the downside that. is the taking of the drugs, really, because yeah. Everybody hates drugs. Join do, a union. Do, 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 we do, haven't do, told do, people do. to join a union in a while, Ron. That was our real catchphrase for a while. It was join a union. Yes. So that was three three out of four for that. So you got seven out of nine. Okay. Well, yeah. Given how long it's been, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I don't think that's bad at all. Really? Mm, sound more convincing. Oh, good job, Laura. <laughs> well, Ron, you absolutely shirked your responsibilities there. Yeah, I'm not only just shedding catchphrases, but also just shedding segments. <laughs> you have to score me, otherwise I don't know how talented I am. <laughs> Maybe that's for the best. So, I mean, Ron's given you the power, Labrats. It's up to you uh, how um, how I did there. Let us know whether you think I got the points or not. Um, also wanted to say, please, nobody hurt yourselves trying to get your testicles back into your body. Uh, nobody even ha- try. If you have a medical opinion on whether or not you should be able to, do balls have a docking station? <laughs> Let us know, but please do not hurt yourself with this or any other Lex experiment. Um, well, there will not be a video of this Lex experiment. <laughs> we won't be taking no. this further. <laughs> um, yes, and we wanted to say, hey, you're listening. If you're still listening to even this bit of ramble, you love us. You love us so hard. And the best way you could show us that you love us is to leave us a five-star review on a podcast app. If you listen on Apple Podcasts, please leave a five-star review and a lovely bit of chat about how much we've changed your lives. Uh, yeah, listen up, chumps, because like, we work really hard on this and uh, just it doesn't take that long. So do your bit. Yeah, what Ron said, but nicer. And um, if you listen on Spotify, you can just tap the thing and leave a five-star review there. You don't even have to write anything out. Yeah, that doesn't even Um, take even nearly as long as it takes to make a podcast. No, but we did choose to do this, Ron. And they chose to listen. (laughs) Sure. Oh, Ron's cranky. Uh, So please leave us a review. We really appreciate it. And um, in the battle for ears in the podcast wars, it really helps us to find more people who will love this. uh, And that is nice. So there you go. Now, an announcement. Next week, we're jumping briefly off the usual plan. For the first time, we're not sticking rigidly to the syllabus. Ron... I know you're excited about next week. What's happening? Spooky Lex Education. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Halloween. So we are doing a Halloween special of Lex Education. There has never been a better week to spread the word about Lex Education and get people to, to have a go. Because obviously we're on episode 19 now and we do recommend you start from the beginning. So, But the Halloween episode is a brilliant taster to say to people, hey, if you've been thinking of looking for a new podcast and you want one check this one out and mm. then they can go back to the beginning and, and join us it's like when they do a tv show and then after you know in like the third season or something they kind of do like a soft pilot you know where they do an episode where they focus on someone else and you're like well that's a good little one offer that you could show someone yeah. without um them being just baffled the whole time yeah so wrap up next week's episode in paper and send it to all of your best pals no go door want- to door knock on doors and you know, go <laughs> Go door to door and ask people for sweeties and tell them about the podcast while you go. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. Um, okay, well, we love you and we'll see you next week for spooky Halloween week. We will be recording in costume and we hope that you listen in costume. And um, we'll see you then. We love you. Bye. Do I say it now? <laughs> oh, my God. How are you getting worse at this? I literally, I honestly don't know if I say it now or when we finish you the lesson. You say at the, end of the, uh, at the end of the episode. That is when everybody can go about their day. Class dismissed. Well fucking done. See, you still try and have the last word, though. Go on, then. Say it again. Class dismissed.